ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, that makes life seem worthwhile, wells in your eyes. Dennis Day is brought to you by Palm Olive Soap and Luster Cream Shampoo. Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. <laughs> the Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, George Dooning in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing Love Somebody. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, but I won't say who. I get feeling warm and gay. When she sends her smile my way I would marry her today But who she is I will not say I love somebody, yes I do Love somebody, yes I do Love somebody, yes I do Love somebody, but I won't say who Don't know why she acts so shy Really I'm a harmless guy Hope she doesn't pass me by Cause if she did I die I know I die I love somebody Yes I do Love somebody Yes I do Love somebody Yes I do Love somebody But I won't I won't say who Doctors, leading skin specialists prove palm olive soap using nothing but palm olive can bring lovelier complexions, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care. Less oily skin for Helen Bixon, Minneapolis. Fresher, brighter color for Clara Franklin, San Francisco. Smoother, younger looking skin for Rochelle Bruchot, New York City. Yes, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advised using palm olive for 1,285 women, many with complexion problems. Some had dry skin, some oily, some dull and coarse looking. And using palm olive alone, nothing else, two out of three won fresher, brighter skin. Now here's the plan these doctors advised. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Massaging for one minute with palm olive soft lather. This cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive's full beautifying effect. Rinse. Do this three times a day for 14 days. It's that simple. But remember, leading skin specialists prove this plan really works, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care. So try palm olive soap this way, using nothing but palm olive, as these doctors advised, for a lovelier complexion. For loveliness all over, use big thrifty bath size palm olive in your tub or shower. <laughs> The town of Weaverville, having no harbor, has never witnessed the awesome spectacle of a giant ocean liner being eased into port by two tiny tugboats, one on each side. However, it does know what such a sight looks like, for every once in a while, Mrs. Anderson goes out walking between her husband and our young hero, Dennis Day. And today, with summer drawing to a close and new fall wardrobes to be purchased, is one of the occasions. We find our threesome now at their destination, Weaverville's largest department store. My, the store is quite crowded today, isn't it, Herbert? Yes, there's a big sale on, Bunny Fluff. <laughs> yes, yeah, some things are marked clear down to only three times what they're worth. Good morning. May I help you? Uh, yes. My husband here would like to pick out a suit. Tell him what you want, Herbert. Uh, yes. You know that snappy green and white checkered number you have in the window, Mr. Clerk? 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he'll take the plain blue serge. <laughs> uh, yes, a plain blue serge with wide lapels. The narrow lapels. Uh, that's what I say, narrow lapels with a, <laughs> with a nice pleat running. There'll be no pleats. All right, you heard me, no pleats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a belt in the back. Yes. You'll get no belt in the back either. <clears throat> Could I have some padding in the shoulders, Poopsie? <laughs> You could not. Boy, you better not ask for it with trousers, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Dennis, when we want your advice, we'll... Uh, oh, my gracious. Huh? What is it, Pupsy? Look who's coming right toward us. That snooty Mrs. Van Nostrand, the head of the Weaverville Ladies' Culture Society. Oh, it was her club that turned you down for membership, wasn't it? Yes. Not only that, but she's always giving very exclusive parties, and never once have I been invited. Can't figure out why. Uh, neither can I. Does she know you? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly she knows me. Say, maybe we've stumbled on something. <laughs> But she is giving another party tonight, and I'd give anything to be... Hmm, I wonder. Huh? Do you suppose if I dropped her a few little hints in a very subtle way... Well, it wouldn't hurt to try, Pupsy. No, it wouldn't. Now, you stay here and try on your suit, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, lover girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Van Nostrand, fancy running into you like this. <laughs> How are you, darling? Uh, Mrs. Anderson. Yes, and, and I'm so glad I saw you, my dear. You know, I thought possibly you could drop over to our house tonight because, you see, we're absolutely free tonight and have no plans at all tonight, and I thought maybe tonight we could get together tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's quite impossible. I'm entertaining this evening myself, a little party for my house guest, Baron Morescu of Romania. Royal blood, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we also have a house guest with us. The, uh, uh, the, 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 the Count de Bretville. Such a charming boy. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Count staying with you? A real live Count? Oh, yes, they're so much more fascinating than the dead ones, don't you? <laughs> Oh, 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 Mrs. Anderson, I simply insist that you and your family come to my party tonight. Oh, Mrs. Van Nostren, how wonderful. <laughs> With the Count, of course. Oh. Well, uh, we'd just love to come, but uh, you see, the Count has a slight cold. Oh, but surely a slight cold wouldn't keep him home. Well, uh... Uh, this morning, it sort of developed into pneumonia. <laughs> uh, well, if the Count is indisposed, I think we'd better just forget the Oh, whole... no, 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 no. I I'm sure he'll be all right. Uh, we'll give him an aspirin or something. <laughs> oh, splendid, yes. We'll expect you about eight, then. Goodbye, Mrs. Anderson. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Clara Anderson, you fool. Why did you have to tell her a thing like that? Now, where are you oh, going Mrs. to... Mrs. Anderson, your husband wants to come over and look at his new... Dennis! Huh? Oh. Dennis, you've just got to help me. I'm in an awful spot. I've got to have a French count immediately. Really? Well, let's see. I think it goes... Un, deux, trois, quatre... <laughs> six, 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 six. <laughs> no, I, I'm talking about a man. But you'll have to do. Come on, there's work to be done. <laughs> Full dress suit, medals, medals. Well, Count de Bretville. <laughs> oh, Dennis, don't you know any other French words besides we? Oui? Well, I know one, but I'd be afraid to say it out loud. Why? I don't know what it means. Come on, tell me what it is. I know French. We may be playing with dynamite, Mildred. Well, look the other way. Fromage. Well, that means cheap. My mind. <laughs> well, you just be sure. All right. Well, you certainly look like a count in that outfit. Yeah, your father gave that to me. Did it itches? Yeah, he cut it off a pair of his red flannels. <laughs> well, you'd never know it. No, not unless it gets loose and the flap opens up. <laughs> 
hope that doesn't happen. And now, we better review those questions about France again to make sure no one can trip you. Okay. All right. What's the most beautiful structure in Paris? Uh, Charles Boyer? <laughs> no, silly. It's the Eiffel Tower. Oh. And remember, every Frenchman is supposed to know exactly how... Now, now tell me again. How... Uh, well, it's pretty high, all right. <laughs> but exactly how high? 984 feet. Did they add a little? <laughs> Goodness, it's always been 984 feet. Janice, can't you remember that? Why, a child of six could. There's one thing I hate. <laughs> well, almost ready? Oh, good, you're all dressed. Dennis, phone for a taxi while Mildred and I get our wraps. Yes, ma'am. Hello, operator, will you get me? Louis. Sure, the oh, get off. Big chance. Hello, I don't off know the line, will you? Now, Louis. I don't want no trouble with the cops. Leave an X, will you? I got all the hand, the nostril and the palm of my hands. Pearls are as good as ours. Get them Pearls? Yeah, but how you gonna go out of the house after your nap? Figure out something. Crooks, Pearls? Wait, gonna rob Mrs. Okay, Van Nostrand. Okay, I'll be waiting. What is it? What are you yelling about? I can't hear him. Crooks, I can hear him on the phone, but they can't hear me. They're gonna steal Mrs. Van Nostrand's pearls. What? Oh, don't be fat. Give me the phone. You happen to be out of what is laughing. <laughs> there is no one on this phone. Just like in a radio play I listened to once. Sure, Dennis? Of course I am. I heard them. Heard them with his very own ears, Mother. Very nonsense. Look what is... <laughs> Mildred, keep at it. We'll break her down yet. You know perfectly well that not... This boy turns out to be a complete... It's no use, Mildred. We can't fight the... <laughs> boy, that Sam and Louis sure are... With the next... We'll be back on Christmas Day in just a moment. Meanwhile, see Dennis to sing You Can't Be True, Dear. You can't be true, dear. There's nothing more to say. I trusted you, dear. Hoping we'd find a way. Your kiss is there, that you and you, but oh, you can My gracious, Mrs. Parties, did you ever see so many people, Dennis? There's a lot of them, all right. Dennis Day, if you don't stop... The eyes, that low forehead, and the woman with him, she looks worse than he does. Oh, gee, what an odd place to hang a mirror. <laughs> Permit me to introduce myself. I'm the Baron Morescu, Mrs. Van Nostrand's house guest. Oh! Oh, yes, of course! <laughs> How do you do? And this is our house guest, the Count de Bretville. A pleasure, monsieur. Touché, madame. Monsieur. <laughs> Naturellement. So the Count is French. Oui. Ah. Permettez-moi, vous souhaitez un séjour très agréable. Hein? J'espère que vous voulez les temps heureux ici en la mairie. Une paix admirable, ne croyez-vous pas? 984 feet. <laughs> Pardon? Fromage? <laughs> Is it possible that you do not understand French? I do not comprehend this. Oh, I explain on you. Uh, the reason... <laughs> The reason that I do not speak French is because when I was only three days old, my mama and papa I bring me here to America. You follow me? Yes. Yeah. Good. And of course, they send me to a school in this country. You still follow me? Yes, of course. <coughs> only if you are leaving France at such an early age and go to school here, why do you still speak with the French accent? Ha! Huh. Now you lead and I will follow you. <laughs> I see some people I had better greet. 
If you'll excuse me, perhaps we can continue this conversation later, eh? But certainly, Herr Baron. <laughs> Good. Pardon, madame. Monsieur le comte. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Good. Louis, listen. I got a way to get the pearls out. As a rum dum here, palming himself off as a French count. A phony if I ever saw one. So the minute I lift the pearls off the old girl's neck, I'll plant them in his pocket. Then when he gets outside, we grab them from him, huh? Sure, don't you see? He can't squawk. He's a phony, too. Right. He takes the chances. We get the pearls. Louis, it's in the bag. Mother, it wasn't Dennis's fault that the Baron could speak French. I know that, but suppose Mrs. Van Nostrand speaks French, too. Gee, we'd be dead. Exactly. So we're taking no more chances. From now on, you're no longer a French count, you're an English duke. An English duke? That's right. And that way we can't miss. All you have to do is say uh, petrol when you mean gas and tram when you mean... Uh, oh, my gracious. Look, she's coming right toward us. Dennis Day, if you let me down this time, I'll... <laughs> oh, Mrs. Anderson, so nice seeing you. And this, I know, is your distinguished house guest. Charmed, Your Excellency. Oh, pip pip, old garbage, cheerio. <laughs> cheerio and all that sort of slop, you know. <laughs> Why, you're English. Oh, quite, old porker. <laughs> But Mrs. Anderson told me you were a French count. Bless my blooming soul, really? Must have been petrolled up at the time. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, quite all right, old cow. No harm done. <laughs> None at all. I say it was deucedly delightful of you to ask me tonight, deucedly. Oh. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. I know, but still juicedly delightful. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, did you really expect to get away with this? Why, I... Please! Uh... This man is no more an English duke than I am. You deliberately put him up to this fraud, and I never want to... <gasps> oh! Oh, my good heavens. Huh? Oh, Mrs. Van Ostrand, what is it? My pearls. Where are they? They're gone. Oh, good gracious, are you sure? Have you looked through all your chins? <laughs> <laughs> Anderson, the crooks got him. Oh, what happened to his accent? I know. You rarely expect to get a... No, but still juicedly delightful. <laughs> Miss... Oh, the pleasure is all mine. I know, but still juicedly delightful. <laughs> Mrs... Mine. I know for you to ask me tonight, juicedly. Oh, oh, the pleasure is all mine. I know, but still juicedly delightful. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Anderson, did you really expect to get away with this... I beg your pardon. Oh, quite all right, old cow. No harm done. <laughs> None at all. I say it was juicedly delightful of you to ask me tonight, juicedly. Oh, oh the pleasure is all mine. I know, but still juicedly delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, did you really expect to get away with this? Why, I... Please! I... This man is no more an English duke than I am. You deliberately put him up to this fraud, and I never want... <gasps> Oh, my good heavens. Huh? Oh, Mrs. Van Ostrand, what is it? My pearls. Where are they? They're gone. Oh, good gracious, are you sure? Have you looked through all your chins? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you, Mrs. Anderson? The crooks got him. Oh, what happened to his accent? I knew it. He stole the pearls. No, no, wait, wait, Mrs. Van Ostrand. I can explain everything. Very well, then. Start with why this pipsqueak is posing as a duke. Yeah, explain that. I mean, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. You see, uh, this young man knew your pearls were to be stolen, Mrs. Van Nostrand. He had inside information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
he deliberately came here posing as a duke. Actually, he is Dennis Day of the FBI. No. no. <laughs> Your pearls. <laughs> Any better because that's his last chance to live. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> oh, Mr. Day. Mr. Day, do you think you can find my pearls? Well, I'll I'll try. Now let's see, what's the first thing to do? Oh yes, uh, Mrs. Van Nostrand, don't wash your neck. There may be fingerprints. <laughs> Very well. Now lock all the doors. Nobody gets out. All your guests are suspects, and I'm gonna bake every one of them. You're going to what? Broil them? Do you mean grill them? Uh, that's it. I knew it had something to do with cooking. <laughs> oh, dear. To have my guests under suspicion. Oh, this whole thing is making me so frightfully nervous. Is anyone a match? Oh, yes, ma'am. You bet. Got one right here in my pocket. Huh? Pocket. <laughs> Why, Mr. Day, is anything wrong? Your face just turned green. Oh, it's nothing, really. Just a new disguise I'm working on to make myself invisible while crawling over lawns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you just hear the phone ring? Why, no. Good, I think it's for me. I'll see you later. But, Mr. Day, my pearls. Oh, Mildred, come here. Over in the corner. I've got to talk to you. Oh, Dennis, what is it? Mildred, the pearls, they're in my pocket. Look. <gasps> Good heavens, how'd they get there? I don't know. Maybe I'm a juvenile delinquent and never realized it. <laughs> you got to get out of here, Mildred. If they catch me with these, I'm gonna... Oh, yes, I know, but Anything I... Anything wrong, my friends? Oh, the young man looks a trifle ill. Oh, oh yes, that's it. He is ill. He, he needs a breath of air very bad. Oh, let me help you, sir. Come, right through this French door. Huh? Oh, gee, thanks, Baron. You're a pal. That you, Louis? Good work, Sam. Right in the dot. Okay, cover this guy. Oh, that's all right. I'm not cold. <laughs> uh, quiet, you. See this thing? It could go off. A gun. So you're the crooks. You're not a baron at all. Why, you... Shut up, skite. Hey, you can't talk to her like that. I got a good notion of... Yeah, to what? Better shut up, skite. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend, let's have those pearls. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, Sam, tie them both up. Right. Lie still, you. Dennis, are you going to let these men tie us up without even a struggle? You bet. <laughs> There we are. Should I give him a little tap with the blank jack? First, let's have a look at the car. Make sure everything's set. Come on. Okay. Oh, Dennis. Huh? Listen, I have a plan. Well, let's hear it. I gotta like it better than a hit in the head. <laughs> <laughs> look, our only chance is to get them fighting among themselves. Fighting among themselves? Hey, yeah, I see what you mean. Good. If they... Oh, sh here they come. Okay, that's fine, Sam. I'll meet you in St. Louis with the pearls day after tomorrow. Ha! St. Louis, he says. Quiet, you. Fair. Why don't you ask him why he got a plane reservation to Mexico City? What? What's the kid mean, Louie? Oh, he's nuts. Don't listen to a dope like him. Yeah, don't listen to a dope like me, Sam. Let him take the loot to Mexico and eat chili con carne and gringos and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go to St. Louis and beat your feet in the Mississippi mud. I'll cut that out, kid. So that was your idea, huh, Louie? Oh, don't listen to him. It was just a lucky guess. <laughs> Double cross. Okay, Louie. This time you get what's coming to you. See this blackjack? I'm warning you, Sam. I got one too. But I'm going to use my fist, you rat. Yeah, well, I'm going to beat you with a plate. <laughs> well, what do you know? A dead heat. <laughs> Dennis, look. They've knocked each other out. Yeah. And here comes everyone from the house. Mildred, Dennis, are you all right? Oh, yes, Mother. Oh, sure. Fine, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, Mr. Day, you're a hero. You found my pearls and caught the two thieves. Oh, Mrs. Anderson, I am so grateful. My dear, you may consider yourself a member of my club right now. Oh, Mrs. Van Nostrand. <laughs> oh, tell me, Mr. Day, how did you ever do it? Oh, he was wonderful, Mrs. Van Nostrand. He trailed them out here. They pulled guns on him, of course, but that means nothing to an FBI man. Nah. <laughs> And he beat them into unconsciousness with his bare fist. Oh, good heavens. Did you really, Mr. Day? Oh, sure. And look, the hard way, too, with both hands tied behind my back. Oh. 
Dennis Day will be back in just one minute to sing It's Magic. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, you can see this come true, revealed by a luster cream shampoo. You'll see your hair lovelier, your wave or curls softer, more glamorous, easy to do quickly. Even in hardest water, luster cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, easier to manage, brilliant with sheen. Don't wait. Tonight, use luster cream shampoo. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty, magical cream. Discover why it's by far the top favorite cream shampoo. Get the big jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, you can be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. With George Duning and the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing the romantic ballad it's magic. You sigh, the song begins. You speak, and I hear violin. It's magic. The stars desert the skies and rush to nestle in your eyes. It's magic. Without a golden one or Fantastic things begin when I am in your arms. When we walk hand in hand, the world becomes a wonderland. It's magic. How else can I explain those rainbows when there is no rain? Magic. Why do I tell myself these things that happen are all really true? When in my heart I know the magic is my love. Next week, tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. Dentists know what cleans teeth best, and over 4,000 dentists say Colgate tooth powder with a two-minute routine gets teeth sparkling and super clean. So to remove dull film and get your teeth shining clean, just brush teeth two minutes morning and night with Colgate tooth powder. Brush inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Always brush away from the gums. See how quickly this gets teeth naturally bright. It removes dull film that improper brushing misses. And Colgate tooth powder also sweetens your breath. Try it. Buy Colgate tooth powder today. This is Vern Smith reminding you that Dennis Day returns again next week, same time, same station. Join us then, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.